Hey, good morning. It's Thursday, March 23rd, Wednesday. <laughs> we wish it was Thursday, don't we? Yeah, it's Wednesday, Bob. It's only Wednesday. How dare you get my hopes up? It's only Wednesday, March 23rd. On the year, in the year 2022. Is it 2022? It is. It is. Hey, how you doing? Maybe I need to go have another cup of coffee. Hmm. Hey guys, yesterday when I was uh, doing my uh, uploading of the, yesterday's episode of Hope at 7 to Spotify, or checking out the video, I can't remember, I stumbled across a treasure. And today um, I wanted to bless you with um, the blessing that I received yesterday of coming across a devotional called God's Word in a War-Torn World by Max Lucado, pastor from the States. A uh, man of God, a, a good writer, and um, I needed to really hear what he had to say. So today, um, I thought I'd take a break from Mark and uh, play you a devotional that's going to bless your heart. And then afterwards, I'd like you to stick around for this great song called "You Already Know." But I'll uh, I'll bridge the gap there between Max and the singer. So here we go. This is going to bless your heart. This is Max Lucado, God's Word for a War Torn World. Jesus has a word for those of us who find ourselves living during times of conflict on a war-torn world. You know, life, it is a dangerous endeavor. and We pass our days in the shadows of, of ominous realities. The power to annihilate humanity, it seems, has been placed in the hands of people who are happy to do so. You know, if classified information falls into sinister possession, if the wrong person pushes the wrong red button, what if things only get worse? No, I mean, it's enough, to, it's enough to keep a person up at night. Christ tells us that things are going to be bad. He talks about ecological turmoil, worldwide persecution, and war. Yet in the midst of it all, he contends, bravery is still an option. Matthew 24, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you're not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Now these words, this passage taken out of Matthew 24, has been the object of much conversation. Is Jesus referring to a time during this age or a special time of tribulation after the rapture of Christians? Regardless of a person's opinion, this much is true. Jesus is saying that things are going to get bad. I mean, really, really bad, but then they're going to get better. And when conditions worsen, he says, now see to it that you're not alarmed. Verse 6, Jesus chose a stout term for alarmed that he used on no other occasion. It means to wail or to cry aloud as if Jesus counseled his disciples, don't freak out when bad stuff happens. This includes wars. This includes rumors of wars. He says we'll always have them. One nation invading another. One superpower defying another. The population of the world will never see peace, complete peace, this side of heaven. And during these times, may God help you and me to remember the, the counsel of Christ. He said, see to it that you are not alarmed. In other words, don't give in, don't give up, for you will soon witness the victory. He says, he who endures to the end will be saved, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to the nations, and then the end will come. Verses 13 and 14. Jesus equipped his followers with this far-sighted courage. He listed all the typhoons of life and then pointed them to look to the end. You see, trust in ultimate victory gives ultimate courage. As one of my friends likes to say, everything will work out in the end. If it's not working out, 
is not the end. Though the church is winnowed down like Gideon's army, though God's earth is buffeted by climate and bloodied by conflict, though creation itself seems stranded on the Arctic seas, Jesus says, don't overreact. Be still in the presence of the Lord, writes a psalmist, and wait patiently for Him. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. Psalm 37, 7. Avoid Pollyanna optimism. We gain nothing by glossing over the brutality of what we see. This is a toxic world. But nor do we join the chicken little chorus of gloom and doom and run around saying, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. Somewhere between Pollyanna and chicken little, between blind denial and blatant panic, there stands the level-headed, clear-thinking, still-believing follower of Christ, wide-eyed yet unafraid, unterrified by the terrifying, the calmest kid on the block, not for lack of bullies, but for faith in his older brother or her older brother. You know, the people of God knew this. Though a host encamps against me, my heart shall not fear. And though war rise up against me, I will be confident. Psalm 27, 3. After the bombs of World War II ravaged down Sound Warsaw, only one structure remained on the city's main street. The badly damaged structure was the Polish headquarters of the British and Foreign Bible Society. And the words on its only remaining wall were clearly legible from the street. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. This is the picture of the Christian hope. Though the world may collapse, the work of Christ will endure. So, Jesus says, see to it that you're not troubled. See to it. The words call for additional attention, special focus, extra resolve, redoubled prayer. Isn't that what Christ is asking for us in this dangerous day on this Fabergé fragile globe with, with collapse on the news, with, with terrorists on the loose? We have every reason to retreat into bunkers of dread and woe. But Christ says to us, see to it that you're not alarmed. Another translation, keep your head and don't panic. Another translation, see to it that you're not troubled. Another, be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. That's from Revelation 2 and verse 10. So friend, make sure the whole of your convictions can withstand the stress of these collisions. Courage is simply a fear that has said its prayer. So pray pray. Jesus said all these challenging times are really the beginning of birth pains, 24 and verse 8 of Matthew. Now, birth pains sound terrible to me, but they're the signal of the onset of the final push. In other words, what we're seeing reminds us that we're just pushes from a, a delivery, just a few ticks of eternity's clock from the great crowning of creation. A whole new world is going to be born. Jesus said these things must come to pass. Must is, is a welcome word that affirms all events, even the most violent, and reminds us that they're all a part of a divine plan. Every trial, every trouble has a place in God's schemes. All things, big and small, flow out of the purpose of God and serve His goodwill. When the word world appears out of control, my friend, it's not. When war mongers appear to be in charge, my friend, they aren't. So take a deep breath, pray, and see to it that you're not afraid. May God's richest blessings be with you. And as always, if you have any prayer needs whatsoever, post them on the page, and we will gladly pray for you. And today, amen to that. If you need some prayer, please reach out and message me. But I wanted to play you that video, and it'd be worth it if you just join us to when I uh, hit publish here for you to go back and listen to this whole talk by Pastor Max. It is good for the soul to hear God's word 
in a war-torn world. I uh, told my Bible study group last night that I skipped the news last night because I just I needed to just take a minute and realize that there's still good news and they didn't want to hear any bad news. And that might be something you want to do once in a while is just tune into this kind of stuff and and skip the skip the main news. But there's a girl named Audrey and she's got a song. Um, she's covered a J.J. Heller song. It's called You Already Know and it's a good tune for the soul. This is Audrey. That was Audrey singing the song about how Jesus already knows all the answers. And I take great comfort in that fact. Let me pray for you on this Wednesday morning. Father, we're going to need more faith in these days and in these days to come. We pray, Father, for the people in a war-torn world. The uncertainty is mounting, Lord, and the um, the pain, the death tolls mounting, the, the stress... Over the last two years and now this war, Lord, is just uh, 
This is hard stuff. If we come to you. You are our only hope. I thank you that you know all things and that you said to look to you. So we look to you. You are our God. You are our mountain of security, our fortress. We will be still and know that you will fight, that you will do the battle, that you have a plan. We choose to trust you. I thank you for your word that never changes, that has got mankind through thousands of years of conflict. We give you our lives and we we ask you for faith and help us to shine your light to the, the people around us that need need faith and hope too. Amen. You guys have a good day. I will see you tomorrow morning.